Hey everyone, it's Drew here with my guys, and we are now doing episode 53 of Enter the Dungeon. Who wants to give the recap of what happened last time? Not, Not it. it. <laughs> nah, I said it first. Drew will be the decider of that. It's his thing that's recording. Who said it first? Hey Chris, you gotta give the description, because I want to hear how you remember it. I don't remember it. <laughs> I'm uh... gonna re this is <laughs> This is all I remember, that we have- we met- we saw a giant blue dragon. Amazing! Until you figure out that it spits acid. And... Sounds a little racist there. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> it was great, it was a blue dragon, except it didn't actually have the power- it was a, it was a poser, you know? I hate that. <laughs> I, hate, I hate people that think they're blue dragons, but they're actually green dragons. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um... What else? The, the dragon taxed. Um, what was, what, Earth mover taxed you. Yeah, we we basically had to make it not eat us or kill us or whatever, and we didn't want to give it anything. Right. So we uh, we prevented him from taking as much from us and to go away and do something else. Yeah, can you believe this guy? He didn't want to pay the uh, toll. How do you think the roads yeah, stay I, maintained, uh, Andreas? I don't know, does the dragon fix them? I, I, I feel like literally murdering the people that might otherwise use your road is not a good way to keep a healthy population of people paying the road. I mean, is, isn't by now the road rotting away of some sort? Also, secondary point, he if he was in affiliation with the law, he would have just said so. Yeah. He was literally just bullying people into getting free stuff. He wasn't asking for money, he was asking for offerings. I mean, then again, it's dragons are greedy. It's possible that I know nothing about infrastructure. I mean, if you think that someone giving you a cow is going to help you build a road or maintain it, you're, uh, w when there is not a... When, when barter is not the primary method of doing things, you know, with an established gold system, it's, uh... Yeah. That, this ain't it, chief. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Definitely not changing my notes around to make it so that he has no official affiliation with the crown. I mean, he was fine with being paid off with just literally, like, a drink of alcohol. Also, I use crown in, like, a almost, like, metaf not, not metaphorical, but euthanistic sense, because they don't have a king here. Uh, a lawless uh, land? No, they have oh a chancellor. An, they have an elected oh, okay. chancellor. Ew. Ew. Elected politics. We want a monarchy. You're going to a kingdom with a monarchy. That's Yay, literally your I'm current moving. trajectory. I'm moving. <laughs> what are you gonna. Oh no. Is your plan to topple the king of Alneg? Maybe. It wasn't. It, it wasn't. It is now. Yep. <sighs> well, okay. You guys are now approaching the walled city of Feral. You can see that there is a wide open gate in the middle of the walls that stretch for... The, the walls themselves stretch for several miles. Does the wall have a name? You have no way of knowing at the current moment, but you can ask. Okay. And so, yeah, as you guys are approaching, Billy says that he's going to have some business to attend to in town. And, um... Oh? I wonder what he's going to do. you remember gonna... who works in this town? At least Maria. did Maria. Last... Yep. I'm going to go harass Maria and steal a rock or something. I don't know. Steal a rock? Like, from the wall, or...? No! You know, from from the arcane geology lab. Yep. Earth mover. As near as we can tell, this rock is thousands of years old. That means absolutely nothing. <laughs> All rocks are thousands of years old. It would be more impressive if you had a young rock. Well, I mean, igneous. Isn't that a pebble? No. Pebbles are some of the oldest rocks. They had to get worn down that oh, far. Oh, that's right. So then what would be the oldest rock? Well, I mean, not <gasps> Volcano. 
Yeah, the, as I said, uh, yeah. igneous. Charlie Freshly Brown, magma. it took that rock thousands of years to get to shore, and you just threw it back. <laughs> Why do I ruin everything I touch? Yeah, and so you actually do notice that there isn't quite like a procession or anything, but there are a few carriages in front of you trying to get into the town. Hey, we're on one of those. Yes. Yeah, and there are some leaving, and um, you notice that each one gets stopped. It's not quite like searched o like thoroughly, but they do kind of seem to be talking to them and doing a quick look over the carriage. They they got a magic mirror on a stick. They mm -hmm. put put under the uh, yeah. Yeah, search and after, the bottom and... yeah, and after about 15 minutes, you're able to pull up next to it, and there is a, a tiefling man who seems to be leading a team of four other people, and he approaches you and says, Hello, welcome to the city of Feral. What is your business here? Crap, what is our business here? Tra what? We're traveling through. Will you be staying in the city for any prolonged period of time? Define prolonged. Not any longer than it takes to stay and leave, I wouldn't imagine. Do you have any official business to do in the city? Uh, I mean, define official. I was going to go visit a... Uh, I can't ever remember if she is from the school or from the government. The government. Okay. Well, because my first dealing there was with the school, and then it got fuddled yeah. with a with a government member from the uh, arcane geology department. Oh yeah, I hear that thing's relevant now. Yes, yes, it is, and I'm the reason. And he just looks up at you. He opens his mouth as if he's about to say something, then stops. Well, because I'm huge. <laughs> huh. Okay then, and. Um, I guess he's going... And are you carrying any contraband, including but not limited to dangerous magic items, undead, or severely dangerous potions? Hmm. I'm, thinking, I'm thinking about it. A magic frying pan isn't a dangerous magic weapon. I, it is my bad... No. Is my bag a dangerous weapon? It has undead in it, but we're not going to talk about that. Yes. How about the chalk? <laughs> the chalk. Oh my God! The... <laughs> Leave all your weapons by the door. Puts down a box of, of ground chalk. <laughs> you don't know what this chalk has seen. Um. No. Uh. Nothing to declare. Uh. Have you had any flu-like symptoms in the past two weeks? No, no, he doesn't ask that. <laughs> Have you or any of the people you come into contact with in the past two weeks reported... Yeah. Why aren't you wearing your face mask? <laughs> I use this world to escape from the real world problems, and I'm not dealing with this right now. Yeah. And he says, and, um, okay. And so it's just the four of you then? Well, the horses, too. Are they sentient horses? I mean, you have to be a little bit more specific about what is sentience, but uh, not as far as I would normally consider. Oh, great. We've got another philosopher. You'll enjoy the <laughs> scholarly district. I already do. H have you been there before? I've been near the school. <laughs> for transmutation magic. That's several hundred miles away from here. Good enough. Well, okay, just go on through before you give me a philosophical headache. Those are the worst kind. He waves you <laughs> on in. And I'm, I'm so, now trying to figure out how they would like try and detect an undead that's in a bag of holding that's technically not on this plane. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so as you go on through, you notice that there seems to be this one uh, main road that carries on for several miles, and you see signs that are pointed, one to the, uh, let me think this, let me think this orientation through, I guess to the north, yeah, to the immediate north that says, uh, to the scholarly district, then the next to the south that says the financial district, or if you carry on, 
um, westerly, you, it says that you can get to the military district and the craftsman district. Hmm. And from where you're sitting, um, you see immediately around you there... Well, I guess immediately after entering the city, there's not much, but after traveling a little further, there seems to be some residential areas and what looks to be almost, like, minor walls about... Oh, let's see now. The whole city is about... A, yeah, about a mile or two away from you. It's not quite like Bossing Se style, but it does seem to be walled off into a couple separate districts. More decorative than anything else. Okay. Okay. Yep. And there also is an indication that towards the center of town, there's what's known as the town hall. So where do you want to go? Well, where's is Billy just like hopping off the cart and running away? Where's what's he doing? Okay, he says um yeah, if you guys can bring me down to the financial district, I've got some business I need to attend to at the bank. Okay. Yep. Is he accompanying us out of the country, or is he staying here? I mean, if you'll allow me, I'll go to Alnig with you. Sure, I guess. Is this Earth the first time Earth remembers realizing that he could just not let him come with? Yeah, well... I mean, Earth Mover doesn't tend to see the the real purpose of of Billy, for the most part. For the most part, he is he has seen some value in him, a little bit lately. But the because uh, he he brought the carriage around for us and all like that. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I, I I think it's more an issue of he doesn't detract anything from our ability to do anything, so I don't really care. And how does Fetch feel about him? Indifferent because he does not have alcohol. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and so I guess you guys are headed more towards the financial district. So yeah, so after some traveling, uh, you pass a lot of people. You realize that this is like Earth Mover. You've been to this city once before, so you know that it's actually pretty huge. Yep. Yep, and so you're able to make it to the financial district, going past. Um, Andreas, give me a number between one and two, or r it, inclusive. Whole number. Say, Whole number about, between one and two inclusive. Yeah, I was, I, was, I was about to give you the square root of two, and you were going to be very upset with me. Um, I'll, 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 I'll go with one. Okay, so that's going to be the closer entry road. Okay. Yes, and so as you're walking down this path, you notice um, to your, I guess, left as you're going in, you notice a very fancy looking tavern called the Gilded Pegasus and the, on the outside there seems to be a knight in armor on you know, in shining armor riding on a horse holding a drink in his hand is this like a statue or like an actual guy that stands there all <laughs> it, it's day it's a painting okay oh but the tavern what drink is it um it just it seems to Paint. be some type of beer but you can't tell what it's not I must know! It's not that detailed of a painting. Tell me! <laughs> I mean, if you guys want, you can always just go in there. We, I, I wanna... No, we must use our intellectual abilities to figure out what kind of beer this man had. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Do I, I need I to roll for it. how detailed this painting is? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sure, let's go for it. Also, is, is drinking... Uh, then again, I guess Pegasi are pretty smart on their own. So you're probably not running a risk of crashing if you're the one drinking. <laughs> At that point, yeah. it's more a case of being given a ride than it is going for a ride. Or yeah, you just kind of lay down on the neck and hope you don't slump off to one side. Yep. Uh, also to yeah, the right, true. you see what appears to be some sort of temple. Hmm. Yep. Let's see, now you Who's pass a few more stores along the way, including you hear a man calling out, get your rings, get your necklaces, get your yeah, watches. 
Yep. Then you hear another man actually from just across the road say, Get your magic rings! Get your magic necklaces! <laughs> hey! And That's he says, more hey, interesting. Hey, shut up, Bill! And he responds, Eh, right back at you, Will. This is your fault for opening across the street from me. <laughs> then what? another guy named Dill. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, get even better. Cabbages. Yeah, even better. Uh, a man walks down. The, a man walks from down the road and says, Hey, be quiet. You're waking up the dead in here. And he says, Yeah, 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 Dill. You say that every day. <laughs> <laughs> and then another man <sighs> walks, uh, runs down the road and says, Sounds like you all need a calming potion. Phil, for the last time, we do not want your calming potions. <laughs> It's like, like the, all the merchants chill. in, uh, who, okay, and from Pokemon, instead of just the Nurse Joys, it's just all, any kind of merchant is actually cousins from from, from each other, or brothers. <laughs> Wait, and their parents named them all ill? Maybe their parents yeah. were ill. <laughs> huh? Maybe their parents were ill for doing that. Uh, <laughs> nah, they just needed to chill. <laughs> Was that intended? Yes. <laughs> oh, come on, dude. Yeah, so then they all disperse. Yeah, and um, Billy, I guess he says to Zoe, yeah, it's going to be a left of the next road. And you pass a, a, yeah, a few more stores. And keep going down, down a bit more, passing some residences. And he says, now what's interesting is that there's actually three banks in this area. One of them is the Imperial Bank of Galay. One of them is the Royal Bank of Alnig that was able to set up a location here. And one of them is what's known as the International Bank of the High Hat. I like the sound of that one. Yep. That's they have beer. <laughs> Oh my gosh, fine. I'm paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> says, yeah, I'm just going to need you guys to drop me off at the hi-hat bank. I've got some stuff to take care of there. <sighs> yeah, and in front of that bank, there seems to be a man wearing a fancy top hat and with a cane. It's a, stat a, a statue of a man wearing a top hat and with a cane. Is it a statue, or is it one of those people that acts like a statue? <laughs> Here you and take This is the second time you've asked. Has Drew done this before? <laughs> Go poke and figure out. I mean, one time you were there for this. The uh, the librarian statue. I mean, uh, set of armor. Oh, oh! I remember that. Yep. I have constant construct paranoia now. Yeah. Oh, and Billy, as he's passing the statue, he kind of gives it like a um a pat on the knee, and looks up at it respectfully, then goes inside. Hate it. Hate it. That does not do anything to dissuade my fears. Yep. And Zoe says, "So, what do you guys want to do in town?" I'm gonna go uh, visit an ex or not ex colleague, uh, uh, an acquaintance. How about you, Thitch? Hello. You gonna go with him, or...? Has Thitch I mean, what other Maria? Choices? What? Wait, Maria? I think what? So, yeah, right? yeah, he, yeah, he met her. Yeah, we, the whole first half of the, uh... The, uh, the adventure bit there was when we went to, uh, Middle Town, she was with us. And we kept forgetting she existed. Yep. Good times. Yeah. Do you guys want to try to meet Bill, Will, Dill, or Phil? Absolutely not. Their names are even close to being Billy Queen. I ain't having it. Oh, God. Also, if these guys are brothers, that makes it even worse that one's named Bill and the other Will. Because <laughs> both of those are short for William. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Bill is short for Billy, which is short for... Billiam? Billy goes. What is Billy short? For? It's just Billy. Yeah, no, it's just it. Billy is Billy. Yeah, you probably asked him at some point, and yeah, you know that's just Billy. I imagine that Fitch would have asked him that. The name's Buck. 
short for Buckmaster, long for Ba. Yep. Okay, so you guys want to go to the town hall? I guess. Um. Well, is that where she works? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's sort of in the middle of the town between the four districts. Uh, you go. I'm gonna take the same path. You retract the same path you just took, or you want to go a different way? Let's go through the alleys. Okay. In a carriage. <laughs> Uh, Chris, give me a whole number between five and six, inclusive. Hold up. What? Say that again? Chris, give me a whole number between five and six, inclusive. A give whole number? number? Five or six. Yes. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I... Okay, I, exclusive. Uh, that's right. Exclusive is excluding five and six. I'm yeah. like, uh, okay. Um, eeny, meeny, miny, miny, five. Okay, five. So I guess you're gonna take the closer road. Uh, you pass a flower shop on the way. Ooh. Uh, produce stand. Oh, you. Know is there any magical alcohol flowers? Um. Oh, do you want to ask? Yes. I'm actually curious because that was like that idea came to me a couple days ago. Yep. Yeah, and so there's a, a man standing there, and he says to you, Oh, yes, hello, would you like a flower? Do you have any magical alcohol flowers? Well, I don't know about alcohol flowers, and he takes a um, sort of closed-off um, rose and holds it up, and it blooms. Ooh, what's this one? Why, this is one of the loveliest flowers of them all. It's known as the rose. You must be careful. Is though. it alcoholic? Well, no, but it does have sharp thorns, so you must be careful while holding it. Does the thorns give alcohol? Are Are you just looking for a drink? Can you turn the rose into alcohol? And he says, "Well, what about this?" And um, he takes out a, he pulls it on a vine, grows, it, uh, does something to it, and grapes start to grow out of it. Are they already alcohol, or do I have to brew that myself? Well, if you buy these grapes, you could ferment them into alcohol. That's too much work. I can do that later. Yeah, if you're just looking for a drink, you can go to Daryl's Discount Drinks up the road. No, I'm looking for ready-to-drink alcohol that I can get out of a flower. And, uh, and sir, so already does, does that morning? kind of flower exist, sir? Not that I'm aware of. Have you already been drinking this morning? No, sir. I'm specifically... I'm trying to start a tavern. But... I'm interested if there's any such thing as a legendary alcohol flower that can... Just curious. If there's anything that well, you know of. Well, if I had to guess, those flowers probably either grow somewhere in the 50 Mile Woods or on the Fey Plain. Rats. <laughs> and so Fitch's 20 year quest of uh, <laughs> genetic botany began <laughs> turn the cars around we're going back <laughs> uh, but yeah you know there's a tavern up the road Daryl's discount drinks or if you want something fancier yeah. there's Perry's premium pours Not interested right now. Okay. But thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I keep walking. Yep. How much time did I waste? <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, I just want to say that, like, a large line formed behind you. <laughs> you get the feeling that this guy's, like, a super popular flower merchant. Oh, no! Ah, uh, come on already! Okay. Do you guys know exactly where I can find an alcohol flower? <laughs> oh my god, I don't know this man. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That was out of my character. <laughs> Thank uh. god. Okay. You know, I'm actually going to start looking for this flower, so Drew, if you want to put it in, feel free. Okay. <laughs> 
weirdest side quest ever. <laughs> I don't know anything alcohol related that can benefit wait, us. Wait, the alcohol plane. <gasps> alcohol Put that plane intro. Put it in. <laughs> alcohol plane or gem rests in the alcohol flower. Yeah. Hey, I'd just like to point out that you guys still have not a uh, search for a planer gem inside the barrel of wine. That's that is correct. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe we'll just never look inside of there. That'll be the last planer gem. Because because when we celebrate finding all the rest, not realizing we're missing one, yeah. we're gonna drink down the barrel and find one. <laughs> No, it's just going to be a, a waterproof note card, and on it it says, Love was the treasure all along. Oh my god. Oh, no. if you do that, I would... Oh, so love is the alcohol! I love alcohol. <laughs> I love alcohol. Disclaimer, Enter story. the Dungeon is not um, uh, promoting binge drinking. But Fitch is... Please drink responsibly. Unless you are literally a halfling. If you are a fictitious creature, you could do what you like. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I imagine you guys continue up the road then. Yeah. Okay, so um, to your left, you eventually pass a produce stand, and to your right, um, a little bit further away, you notice a larger temple. Uh, you pass Daryl's Discount Drinks. Then eventually mm -hmm. a general store before you leave the financial district. Okay. Yep. What was that I just heard? <laughs> yeah. So then if you want to head off to the town hall, you can do that. Yeah, so that's a few miles away, but you know, you have a carriage, so it's not doesn't take too long. And this is basically yep. just a massive stone tower goes up uh, several stories. You can't exactly count the exact number from outside, but... Is it a magical building? You can find out. So there's sort of like an outer stone wall that you need to pass through, but that doesn't have a gate. Okay. Yeah, that also seems to be uh, almost like... It looks as if it once served a perhaps defensive purpose, but not anymore. Does it uh? It, does it look carriage friendly? Oh, sorry. It's it's three inches too short for the carriage now. Because <laughs> we both know that you would have just alchemied your way through. I use transmutation alchemy and change the structure of the building, not the carriage. <laughs> <laughs> now just lower the ground enough for you to slip through. Hey, when you're trying to when you're trying to drive a screw and you haven't drilled the inside diameter to the right size, you don't shave down the screw. No. Okay. So yeah, um, there would probably be logically places to park a horse carriage, right? Oh, stables. Yeah. You there's know not what? really a a car park. Yeah. You know, we'll say that there's like an area to leave the carriage, but then you have to separate the horses and hitch them at a nearby um, horse hitching this place. This is the government. I'm an esteemed guest. I, there's not a peasant that does. They can do this as a. <laughs> okay, fine. A uh, man walks up and says, "Would you like me to hitch your horses for you? Only five silver." How much money do I have? Is is this legitimately worth it? I have eight silver. It's worth the pretension. Mm. I'm doing it. Yes, very well then. And um, yeah, he, and he does, you know, it all for you. He unties the horses, leads them off. There, there we go. Good. That's a nice horse. And uh, will you be? Did you bring your own horse feed, or do you need to buy some? I mean, we're not going to be staying here long enough that it's going to matter. Okay, then. We have horse feed, but... Hmm. Right? Yes? Yes? Yeah, I okay. mean, we're just popping in for a visit. They shouldn't... Hmm. Okay, then. I know nothing about horses. <laughs> Me neither. 
Okay, so, um, I guess you guys enter the... So do you enter the stone tower? Yeah. Yep, so there's immediately, like, a reception area, and there's a woman working at a desk filing some paperwork. Hi, I'm here to see Maria Turin. Oh. She was serious. She actually does have a Goliath associate. Yes. Yep, yeah, well, okay. Um, she's going to be down that hallway she points behind you. Uh, all the way back off us on the left. I wonder if she's still in a broom closet. <laughs> she wasn't in a broom closet to begin with. It was a glorified broom closet. Enchanted? Yeah, for flying brooms? No. <laughs> so, so, yeah. yeah. I'm, uh, head on back there. Yeah, so... Um... And so, yeah, you pass a few different uh, rooms, like um, uh, one area seems to lead off to what's known as the Bureau of Theological Study. Another one is or is the where you were told to go to is the Bureau of Arcane Discovery. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and so you pass a few different uh, offices, like uh, the Office of Applied Necromancy. What the, what the heck is theoretical necromancy? <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> the potential to bring back the past on un the undead. Yeah. The ones that cannot be brought back. <laughs> yeah. The or the ones that have already moved on. Yeah, the Department of Scrying. Yep, yep. I'd like to work at the Department of Crying. <laughs> yeah, the Department of the Plains, and then eventually you make it into the Office of Arcane Geology. Hey! You said the, the, the Department of Plains? Yes. Wait, why don't we go to them? <laughs> I mean, this is this is giant collaborative effort between those two departments. Yeah. This, this is unprecedented work. We must for ask both them if there's an alcoholic plane. Actually, if you want to do that. <laughs> now is the time to decide, Drew. Will there be an alcohol plane? I mean, will Drew say ever no decide? Now? Will Drew ever decide to have an alcohol plane? I just well, like to. Uh... Well, Fitch. I just like to imagine what? that you guys were walking down this hallway. Then Fitch is like, "Wait, wait, wait! This could be important." <laughs> he could answer all of our questions, chiefly the plane of alcohol. It's it's, it's like one of those cartoon moments where the body keeps walking and the head stops and cranes the neck and stretches away. Yeah. yeah. And you hear someone shout from within, "Yes, our ventures with the plane of cartoon physics worked." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is the door to the plane office open? Now that's a very deep question, Fitch. <laughs> I look. <laughs> is it open? Oh, oh, you want the literal door. Yeah, that's closed. Yes. The Oh. I knock on the door. Um, after a minute, a core man opens it, and he says, Oh, uh, yes? Can I... No, he, like, he looks around for a base, like, yes, and then he looks down and says, Oh, hold on there. <laughs> Hello, um, is, I had a question, how many planes are there? Sorry, I, I'm going to the office right across here, and uh, I'm working on something regarding the planes and their, that office, so I'm pretty sure you should know what it, this is about, but, but. How many? How many planes are there? How many planes are there? Well, that's a um, bit of a complicated question. And uh, you see him adding some stuff up in his head. I mean, there are eight primary planes, but then there are countless numbers of demi planes and um, realms that spread off from there. Now, does that exclude any potential planes that are constructed from food or drink? Um. I've heard tales that in the astral plane there are various realms made up of different types of edible foods, but those were all artificially created for that express purpose. 
Okay. I guess how, also alcohol. if you made it to the celestial plane and your idea of heaven involved a lot of food, then they might make that accommodation. Interesting. Interesting. Astral plane it is. Okay. Thank you. Huh. It's just going to go to the astral plane, it, uh, die on purpose, and live forever <laughs> in a field of, of uh, wheat, whey, and alcohol. No. <laughs> Fields full of wheat. Um, wheat. Mountains of whey and a river full of alcohol. There you go. No, you know the tale of Tantalus? You're just going to have a bottle of beer (laughs) floating in front of you that you can never quite reach forever. Wait, but I thought you said it was the ideal. Giant vodka. No, you're going to the bottom of Nine Hells. (laughs) Not vodka Nine Hells. The nine vodkas, no. But yeah, you guys go to the end of the hall. Yeah. Yeah, and this door is standing open. Is Maria inside, or is the like room vacant? Maria is not inside, but there is the dwarf man. Do you remember his name, Andreas? No, I don't even remember the being a dwarf man. To be completely frank, you rescued him from the Echoed Mountains. Not a single ounce of recollection. His last name is Diamond. He's the last member of the Mystic Hammer Clan. Ah, there we go. I didn't know he went to the Arcane Geology Department at all. And then uh, he looks up from the paper he's writing on and he says, Oh! Oh, it's you two, and um, you have a third friend now. Yes, we do. Salutations, I'm Zoe. This is likely to be my only line for this entire episode. (laughs) Hi. Oh yeah, Solo, it's uh, it's Thitch, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, am I speaking to again? A dwarf? The dwarf guy that... Where you got the zombies? The guy we rescued from. All there. right, that guy. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Ah. Hey, dwarf man. Dwarf, dwarf. You don't remember my name, do you? Yeah, I do. I just neglect to use it right now. Anyways, here's Earth Mover. Yes, I, I can see that. He's kind of hard to miss. Thank you. Also, by the way, Earthmover, th- these hallways and this particular room are only about six and a half feet tall. Uh, for saying I thought he said that in character, by the way. <laughs> yeah, he's like, wait a minute. This doesn't How make are you sense. physically standing in here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, you're probably slightly crouched over, right? Just a little bit? Yeah, I'm hunching. Yep. Oh, by the way, this same piece of paper that I just dug up with um, Godrin Diamond's name on it also reminded me that you got two emeralds. Do you remember that? When? Page? From the statue of the uh, Dwarven King, the one that he broke the leg off of. Oh. Those are worth money. Yeah, because I don't think you ever sold them. No. Imagine desecrating a statue and not using the remains for profit. Wait a second, did we put the emeralds in my bag of holding? Probably. It's We have a ton of... We have, like, Narnia in there by now. There's a whole world in there right now. There's a portal <laughs> to the plane of Narnia. No, the thing is, the zombies are the rulers. Oh, God. They've been breeding in there. What cruel and angry gods. <laughs> so, um... What brings you here to the office of arcane geology? G G. It's not the hallway, is it? It's an office, so it shouldn't be reverberating like that. Yeah, but it sounds better like this, this, this. By the way, he's doing that effect himself. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> I was thinking thaumaturgy at least. Yeah. 
Uh, why are you repeating that word? I have not you had have anyone to speak to you for fact. the past three days. <laughs> no Where's one Maria? visits this office. No. Where's Maria? Yeah, where she is she? Is right now still on the other side of the country, directing that expedition down into the Echoed Mountains. She sent me here to take care of some things for her. Like? Um, let's see now. Well, I am f filing a complete report on everything that happened in my time there. Should we update you on what's happened so far, then? Do you have any more data on the planar gems? Ha! <laughs> Boy, do we. <laughs> We've been to the Fey Plane recently. Says, that was not a fun trip. He's like, wait, one second. Takes a swig of water from his glass and to do a spit take. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we uh, we went into the 50 mile wood. Uh, went into the Feywild part of it. Spoke to the druids. They put us through a trial. And now we have, uh, we, we know where the Fey Gem is, and we know how to go get it from there. We've got a little promissory note, basically, to go get it from, uh, Willowsbrook. Huh. Interesting. Well, that is, um, that's definitely arcane geology. I'll be sure to send a letter to Maria. We are currently on our way to get another one somewhere in the ocean. That, yes. I hope you have more specific data than that. Slightly. Uh, we also have a city that we can go to. Wait, oh. hold on. That is across the ocean. Yes, that's across that ocean that we're going. Yeah, to. that's right. So we're gonna we're gonna go across the ocean. We're probably gonna do the water temple first. Yeah. I keep calling it a water temple. It's not really a water temple. The water... Right Wait, is there a water plane? Hold up. Where are we going? Yeah, it's... Well, we're not going to the plane. We're getting the... Well, you know maybe it. we are. I'm guessing we are. Man, I hate water levels. <laughs> Note to self, spend the next however long playing as many Zelda games as you can to get the worst crossed out best. No, no, the worst water levels are from Mario. Oh! Right. No, water temple's worse. No, tell you Okay, what, how gonna, about this? The one from Kingdom Hearts. I haven't played Kingdom Hearts. Actually, I haven't played Legend of Zelda or Mario either, but I haven't, I haven't even watched playthroughs of Kingdom Hearts. Look, the water level in Kingdom Hearts is one of the worst ones. You can ask anybody. Um, I'll just rip the, off of uh, Water World from the uh, the the sequel to Adventure. <laughs> oh gosh. Mm. Uh. In any case, and we also know that we could potentially get one in Gypsy from Sword a Sphinx, Quest. or get information Sword from Quest Water the Sphinx. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sounds like you. By the way, you might want to speak to the. Department of the Plains over there, they might be able to help you. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, we 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 just spoke to them very briefly about. Oh, I did. Yeah. We well, yeah you did. Mainly about how many planes there are, but uh, he didn't know I was asking for a uh, specific plane. Well, which plane were you looking for? The alcohol plane. No, really, which plane? <laughs> a plane that's full of alcohol. Don't ask. You know what? Your stunned silence is uh, is fair, but you know it could be worse. You could have been asking for the succubus plane. <laughs> you, you mean the non? What are you hell? talking about? That isn't that the burning hells? Yeah, Andreas, there are literal. That's not all that's there. Yeah, but there are probably literal succubi and incubi in this universe. Oh, there absolutely are succubi and incubi in the nine hells. That's not the point. The, uh, there's almost certainly alcohol. In Elysium. 
right? Yeah. There's alcohol here. It's yeah. not the alcohol plane in in the uh, material plane. And plus, I'm sure there's probably like different seas: the Lager Sea, the IPS Sea, the uh, the Light Beer Sea. That's that's just basically a normal sea. <laughs> It may as well be water. <laughs> the the dark the dark ruby sea. The red wine sea. <laughs> the white Vino wine. Vino blanco. Yeah. The vo- the vodka uh, oceans. No, it's probably the vodka trenches. Let's be real. Oh, true. <laughs> the, Mar- <laughs> the Marianas Trench is is just the, the further down you oh instead of having a differential water pressure you have a differential alcohol content yeah as you go deeper the further it, down deep. you go the higher the alcohol content it gets more and more fortified yeah and that the deepest of the deepest of the oceans is the purest of alcohol ever clear so yes. the ever clear trench <laughs> so you guys gonna be in the city for long Probably not too long, right? Well, we're, a, we're trying to. There's a lot to see here. Uh, you guys might be interested in checking out the scholarly district. Perhaps. <laughs> That's the second time it's been said. Oh right, it has, hasn't it? Maybe it's important. Um, it or the military like district, if you want to buy some surplus equipment. Uh, we have, have no money. Do you have any need for new armor or equi- or um things like that? You could go to the craft. I don't think I have money. With. We need to go on a side quest because I need money. Or potentially, um, if we were to enter into a collaborative effort between the uh, arcane geology and planar uh, uh, sciences departments, would it be possible to open up some sort of granting for the work that we are doing as adventurers that are making advancements in those fields? Oh. Well, there is a promising idea. I mean, you've already... You already are planar travelers, and you have one gem. And one swiftly on the way. Yep. Here, tell you what. I will talk to the head of uh, the planar department for you. Okay. Yep, and if you're in need of money right now, you can go upstairs. Usually the town guard will commission quests for people if they need it. You know, taking care of, um... Uh you know, vermin or anything like that. Sometimes catching criminals. Rat sort of killing, work. rat killing, rat killing. <laughs> well, sure. I mean, the sewers are flooded with giant rats. I'm sure we can get them to be an organized group. <laughs> we just gotta figure out a way. Non-sentient race. <laughs> gonna, are they non-sentient? You're gonna unionize the giant rats? Are giant rats sentient? I rat thought they were. Folk. Well, there are rat folk, but then That's there are different. giant rats, which are different. Yeah, giant rats are a medium monstrosity. Or oh, beast. that's right. Yeah, there are were rats. Yeah, the were rats are probably sentient. Yes, yeah. yes, they are. You met a few in the fate fate plane. All right. Is that who we killed? <laughs> you killed the giant rat who makes all of the rules. Yes, we did. I'm sorry, Mr. <laughs> Ratburn. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's that's that sounds like an agreeable arrangement. Um, yeah. Or if you have any miscellaneous equipment that you want to sell, you could probably find a town, a, a store somewhere in town to take it. You know what? I probably do have some things to sell. Um, Giant barrel, two barrels of alcohol. No, we're gonna make a traveling bar. Damn you! Which involves selling it. Yes, but not just selling the entire barrel. Also, I want to point out, we've gotten most of this alcohol for free. Yes. Exactly. That's how you build a business. You turn nothing into something. No, no. What you do is you come up with some really cheap product, then you get other people to buy it for you, and buy it off of you to sell it, but the only way to make money is if they get other people to buy it off of them and try to sell it. Aha! Pyramid schemes. We should take it to Gypsy. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, are you guys going to make a pyramid scheme in this campaign? It's not a bad idea. 
Yes, it is. No, it's not. It's not like they can easily track it back to us with things like scrying magic to organize a raid. It's not like you literally passed the scrying department. On the way here. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Gotta just go to the Department of Applied Necromancy and sell them your zombies. <laughs> After we had to go through border control and tell them we didn't have any zombies? Yeah. Oh, we didn't... We didn't say zombies, per se. We said we didn't have anything, so they don't know anything. Yeah. He literally explicitly said undead. I didn't hear it, so it didn't exist. <laughs> that sign won't stop me, because I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also, if either of you two are up for human experimentation, you can make money that way. I'm not human. Neither All right, I guess he. you want to say if either of you are up for living exper for magical experimentation. Hmm. Sounds like government corruption. I'm in. <laughs> the, uh, uh, no, more seriously, of what nature would the magical experimentation be? I mean, I don't have any in particular, but you could probably find some. That are, like, government-funded, or...? I didn't say that. Ugh! Did this government official... Well, I guess he's not. No. Is he? I prefer the term private contractor. Oh my god, he's an external evaluator for arcane geology grants. This is terrible. Um... Anyway, someone that works with the government, if not for the government, just recommend us a black market job? No, he just wants to make sure that you know all your options. Did he allude to us doing a black market job? He suggested it as a possibility. Oh my god. Yeah. I will not be doing that. I'm going to go... Oh, okay. Actually, wait a minute. Is what Agathorn does illegal, or does he work for the government? You don't know Agathorn, so... I don't know Agathorn. I'm asking out of character. Is that illegal, what he does, or is he government-funded now? You would have no way of knowing, but from what you do know, just randomly carving people's brains open is generally not a good thing. Oh, goodness me. But what if they're already dead? That's probably fine. Yeah. Anyway. Yep. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I think we're probably going to go upstairs. Okay. So, yeah, you're going to have to go back through the uh, main office area, and the woman says, So, um, did you get taken care of what you needed taken care of? Uh, we did. We've been referred to the, uh, who was it, the guard? Um, he said upstairs the town guard might be able to give you a job. Yeah. So we've been referred to the uh, town guard to go seek out a job because we're a little low on funds. Oh, you're going upstairs? Yes. Please, just be careful. Don't, don't say anything stupid. What do you mean? I, I, I've, I've had experience with adventurers, and they tend to get on the wrong side of the town guard. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't I worked with the town guard here before? Not... This particular We've one. been on that sort of situation before. Oh, by the way, Andreas, Farrell, the city you're in, is the one from the Union Maps episode. Ah. They're already not fond of me then, yes? They don't know about you, necessarily. Huh. And, um, she looks at Thitch and says, You're a monk, right? Yes. Please do not challenge them to any arm wrestling. Grappling Who? contests, fist fights, or anything else of that nature. Oh, the guard? Yes. Why would I do that? The only thing I'd be um, challenging them to is drinking contests. <laughs> that is so much worse, Thitch. What are you like... talking about? It's you know just what? drinking. You know what? I, I, g I gave you a warning. I'm not liable for you. G go upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I wish. Oh, wait, hang on. 
Now I need to look. I think it's illusion, but I'm going to make sure. Wait, do I have access to illusion? What schools am I? I have access to transmutation and... Evocation. Evocation, that's yeah. right. I think the original also said illusion, and we decided that didn't make sense. Yeah. So, yeah, if you go upstairs... Otherwise, I was going to say, I, I was going to illusory script a uh, a message that said she was liable for her <laughs> behavior. Yeah. But anyway, the second floor is the Ministry of War. Okay. The Ministry of War? Yeah. War? They have the entire floor. Holy cow. Wait. I mean, the, um, the first floor was the Ministry of um, Magical Research. Yeah, but there's so many, like, very yeah. finite subdivisions of that. How many? Yeah, there's no. There's many... probably, like, only five divisions of war. Well, if you first go up, you realize that the place is divided into the Department of the Navy, and then there's the Department of the Army, which is the larger section. Have they got an Air Force yet? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's actually just magical force. I mean, you can inquire on about that. Have you guys thought about taming wyverns? <laughs> you just poke at some random uh, guard and just like... <laughs> <laughs> this one this one soldier this one guard is gonna be like oh my gosh you <laughs> can like, do that that's no, right no, no. he's mid conversation with his friend he's like you know what I'm telling you Hannah one more provocation and I'm just gonna jump out that window uh, I've had it up to here with the asinine ideas that people are walk up and for some reason always pitch to me oh yes hello sir how can I help you Hi. Um, I I noticed the uh, the divisions here of of the uh, you know you got you got the navy you've got ground forces. Have you considered uh, taming wyvern to create a force that can go over city walls in the case we ever have to uh, invade other other cities that might have good defenses? He takes off his helmet. <laughs> He's just like. Wait, that's actually not a terrible idea. He puts it back on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not asinine. Yes. And you know what? I am going to speak to the captain about... to the. I'm going to speak to Major Aria about that. All right. If, uh, if it passes, <laughs> let him know it was Earthmover's idea. Ah. Call you Wait a second, who's the one who's... Okay, I said the magic division, though. Yeah. Alright. I'll let you have it. But yeah, let's just say, um... Major Arya D. Delik has quite the interest when it comes to new flying technologies. Oh? Yep. And then suddenly walking into the room, there is an Aarakocra woman, and several of the soldiers just kind of snap to attention. Ah. Oh no, I have bad I've been I got a bad feeling about this. Hmm. Yeah. All right. As you were, and she walks down the hall and says, uh, c can we uh, help the three of you? What are you doing here? Is it the Eric Cochra pirate lady that we beat up? No. Yeah. It's most certainly not her. Good. Okay. Okay. Do you ask that? <laughs> no. Hey, are you that pirate we beat up? No. <laughs> that would just be racist. <laughs> hey, you're an Aarakocra woman. Are you the one that we beat up in the middle of the ocean? <laughs> on a boat that we then burnt? And led her to starve? Yeah. Which me then she just ate her crew? Hi, you're that an Aarakocra you? woman. Can we beat you up? No! <laughs> That's so much worse! Anyway. Yes, exactly. Hi, uh, we were sent from downstairs to inquire about uh, potentially getting a, I, I guess, temporary job, a small assignment to uh, earn some amount of money. Well, why do temporary when you can do long term? You know, um, enlisting with the Galay army is a great life decision. I'm, uh, uh, I'm not a no. citizen. <clears throat> Same here. Well, that's okay. We allow non-citizens to enlist. In fact, it's the fastest path to citizenship. <laughs> that seems really corrupt. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's been abused way too many times. Well, it's not the only like... path. 
No, I, I, I don't. I'm not implying that it is, but it seems like a very easily abused path. Yeah, since it's the fastest. Your enemies could definitely use that. Well, anyway, so you're looking for a... So, like, what kind of... Well, what, what's your skill set? Do you track down criminals? Do you slay vermin? What do you do? We're well, very good my, my primary line of work has been tracking down uh, the planar Rocks. gems. Rocks. The what now? Ah. The rocks. I, I pull out the earth gem because I just apparently wow, have it just, on me at all times. I just whip, whip out, it out the earth gem. <laughs> you just pull out, just whip out an emerald. By yeah. the way, I've decided that, um... I haven't completely decided... It, it, yeah, so you just pull out an emerald probably... Not the size of your hand, I guess, but probably about the size of Fitch's hand. That's tiny. That, that is tiny. Yeah. The then size again, of my, my hand my in real life. It's massive damage, so... About the and, size of a computer mouse. Yes. Okay. And you know what? Actually, about the shape of a computer mouse is what I'm imagining it looks like, except um, a little more. Except it's more rounded off at the bottom. Okay. And it's just um, yes, that's a nice emerald, I guess. No, these. Uh, I've have attuned to it, right? Yeah, you've spent some time getting to know it. So, what what special boons did I get from doing that? Not not strictly like mechanical boons, but like boon is in the general sense of the word. Well, you realize that it definitely has can help you in when it comes to moving around dirt and stone nearby. Okay. These <laughs> gems are in a very meaningful way connected to the different planes. Of the uh, of the is universe the right word for this world? Yeah. Okay. They uh, they're basically giant wellsprings of magical power yeah. that are intrinsically linked to the different planes. They could be enemies. Why? Why yeah. would the literal government army be enemies? Any Andreas, government could be corrupt. Andreas, haven't you ever read a book or watched television? I think I I read in 1984. I think I got the I think I got the message. Yeah. The government is always right. Andreas, you're the <laughs> wait. Andreas, you're the alchemist. You're the unionizer. <laughs> I am the union. I I am the one that goes. No, I I'm trying to make it like. I, I've, I've been affronted, I've been insulted, and now I feel the need to, to prove myself right is what this is. This is hubris wow. more than anything else. So, you, you're, are, are, are you offering that to us? No, I'm trying to explain my skill set, because you asked. I, I, I don't think we're, we're... We're not hiring rock hunters at the moment. Oh... Uh. And then suddenly a man rushes up the stairs and hands her an envelope. <laughs> uh huh. Okay, let's see what this is about. And she says, okay, establish a perimeter around the Undertaker's office. Make sure that nothing gets in or out. And then also set up guards at every other entrance to the catacombs. What's going on? Well, it seems that we've just had a bit of an undead outbreak. Huh. Oh, yeah. I should mention some of the other things that I've done. I was instrumental in the takedown of the entire puppy, uh, puppy chow gang, and was one of the main people that made them unionize into Middle Town. That was you too. That uh, well, it was me and a few others and this individual here. Yes. Oh. By the way, it wasn't Mitch, with us. Sorry, it wasn't with us. What? Fitch, do you add anything? You just found out that you're gonna have the opportunity to punch a bunch more zombies. Get what? My zombies? What? You just heard that there was some type of undead outbreak in the catacombs. There's no way of me able to control them, right? Not that you presently know of. I need an undead master. 
Well, you anyway. are an undead master. I must need one that can turn zombies to to give because like I don't have the power to get them to obey me, right? Not presently. Exactly. That's the point. I need someone. Hold up, Zoe. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> can you help with undead? <laughs> she can uh, turn them. I have a sword can you... and spells. Can you control undead in any capacity? I'm, I'm not a necromancer. Dang it! Do you know any ne necromancers? Tell me. This is absolutely inf important information. I mean, we passed the office of applied necromancy downstairs. I run over to that black necromancy. Yeah, <laughs> you can you, skip me. Just keep going with this situation. Yeah, you just dart full force with your monk speed. He'll, uh... He'll probably be back. So, do you want to deal with this? Help us deal with this, then? Uh, yeah. He, he's, uh... He's fond of beating things up. Especially undead, I suppose. Well, anyway, the Undertaker office in the Scholarly District, um, each of the each under each official Undertaker office and each temple has entrances to the catacombs that allows them to lay the dead to rest, and we're receiving a report that there was a bit of a zombie outbreak. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, if you want us to help with that. Yes, okay, so the closest entrance to here would be, well, we're in the middle of the city, so you could go to any of the four districts, I suppose. Here, and, um, and so she starts uh, writing something out and says, okay, what, what are your names? Uh, I am Earthmover, the mm -hmm. one that ran down the stairs is Thitch. And this is Zoe. Okay, and she hands you a card saying that uh, the adventurers known as Earthmover, Zoe, and Thitch have permission to enter the catacombs to deal with the zombies. Huh. Well... Now I need to go find him. Yep. And so, Thitch, uh, you dart down the stairs and start pound. I guess, do you just start pounding on the necromancy door? Is it already open? <laughs> Now, all, all the office doors are closed, but you can knock Dang them. Dang it. I don't know. I, the thing is, I have to look for a way. The, my thought process is I need to be able to hire a necromancer or be able to learn some sort of necromancy-based spell. Yeah. So if you pound on the door, um, a very pale man in a very dark suit opens it up and says, Hello there. Hello! I want to learn some basic necromancy to at least get zombies under my control. How is that possible? You wish to study the art of wizardry? No, I just want to learn one spell. <laughs> well, if you wish you could become my pupil, I've always wanted an apprentice. Yeah, because you probably will turn them into undead. <laughs> no, only if you die from another cause for us. I would never kill my apprentice. I don't like the emphasis on my. How many other uh, people's apprentices? Hey, uh, Earthman, you have? you're still upstairs. I know. Yeah, that's right. Okay, okay. Let me see. Or right, can can you at least tell me what is needed to at least turn in un tur make an undead yours? Huh. Well, you would need to override whatever magic is currently possessing them because they are loyal to. Whoever raised them. Okay. After that, what do I have to do? Say, do I have to kill them? Do I have to punch them into submission and get them to stop? Well, uh, undead don't really operate like people. You can't just. You no, I'm talking about like the person who's uh, ru who raised them. Well, I suppose that you could just use any normal method of communication to get them to do what you want. The zombies or them? The masters? The, the, the necromancer. Okay. And if they don't want to? You, you give them a good reason? I don't know, you convince them? Offer them payment? Beat them with two within an inch of their lives? <laughs> <laughs> Can I bring them to you if they're dead? You, you, oh, you, you, you want to start bringing bodies to me to magically examine? 
Can you I mean, give me zombies? Just between you and me, I'm supposed to, you know, go through this long, elaborate process with an undertaker and fill out a requisition form. But if you want to bring some to me more directly, be hard to get to the front door, though. <laughs> oh, that's what you think. <laughs> I might just do it. Actually, I can. I just pull out the bag of holding. <laughs> no. Wait, is that a bag of holding? Yes. Okay, it's mine. tell you what, if you get me some corpses in good condition, and if I turn them into zombies, I, I might let you keep one or two. Ooh. What about if I capture enemy zombies? Are you able to, and I kill the ma owner? Well, well, it, it might not be necessary. It, it's not necessary to kill the owner, but it is. Easy no, 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 no. Well, I mean, like, say, say he's trying to kill me, and okay. I kill him in self-defense. Well, it, it's easier to raise fresh zombies than it is to try to take over someone else's zombies in the general case. All right, I'll keep that in mind. Yeah. And um, I guess Earthworm, mm -hmm. at this point, you're able to catch up with him. Mm -hmm. Howdy. Mm. Oh, hello, is this a friend of yours? One could say he's a friend. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I understand that. That's a way of talking to your party member, Fitch. <laughs> I understand that. He, I this guy's weird. He, I'm have... starting to catch vibes off this guy. I also have trouble seeing the living as my friends. <laughs> ha. Alright. Anyways, I'm trying to get this guy to help me get more zombies. Oh, okay, gotcha. I really, you know how much I like the zombies by now. We're down to one or two, yes. We're two. We're down to two. Wait, we lost one, and then did we lose I both the zombies at the, the explosion? One. You have two zombies. Okay. Okay. Same amount. All right. Play. Well, okay then. How about um? Okay, do you guys have anything else you want to do with this guy then? I don't think so. No. So uh, I just need to ask that question, to make sure what how to do it. So All right. Want, um, how about we get you guys in front of the catacombs and then we call it a night. All right. All right. Cool. Okay. And he says, "Well, okay then. Um, good luck with your project." And he yeah. At you. No problem. Just a reminder: you guys did not exchange names or anything like that. No, but if he needs a name, he would have asked. Yep. See, people that deal with life energy don't need your name. Yep, okay. <laughs> so how do you guys want to get to the catacombs? Which district do you want to go through? Whichever one is m at all mar moderately closer. Ooh, um, ooh, ooh. Actually, actually no. no wasn't, the, wasn't the main outbreak in the Scholastic District? Yes. So I guess that's probably the right direction to head. Yeah. Okay, then. So then that's going to be to the bottom right of my map. South southwest? Uh not exactly. Where is your cardinal rose? Well, just the way that this um whole city's pointed. You know what, I'll I'll answer that next time. Okay. Feral districts. Scholarly, so yeah, you guys are. Um, do you take the carriage? Probably. Yeah, you're just like no time to explain. Let's ride. Zombie horses are tight. They're just regular horses. Oh, okay. For you're now. taking your horses back then. Well, okay then. Thank you for staying with us. Thank you for putting them up. Yep. So yeah. Um. So yeah, if you ride off to that part of town, um, fastest way to the Undertaker. Okay. So yeah, I guess you yeah when you enter the district, you're able to pass a pawn shop, a tailor. Um, you notice an enchantment school. Hmm. What does enchantment do again? Oh, uh, what exactly entails enchantments? Uh, enchantment magic uh, deals with uh, people's brains. So like the charm spell. Yep. Charm okay. All right. Yep. Then you uh, pass what appears to be a guard precinct where there are people uh, who seem to be scattering, or who seem to be on guard and um, still and like on the move in a particular direction. 
Or uh, they, do they seem to be going the same way as we are? Yes. Okay. So, uh, you pass... Um, at one point, on one side of the road, there's a large temple, and on the opposite side of the road, there's a building labeled library. Okay. Then you um, pull right, and you pass a necromancy school. <gasps> I feel like we're getting close. And further down, there is what appears to be some type of um, private office area that is surrounded by guards. That's probably the perim- That's probably the perimeter. Yep, and that's where we're going to wrap it up for tonight. Okay. All right. So, hey, now you guys have goals. Yeah, concrete ones, too. Yep, you're going to yes. make some money that you might get some more zombies. Yes. <laughs> All right, cool. Okay, well, this was a productive ish session. You guys learned more about the plane of alcohol, and you found zombies. Oh, wait, that's I next time. I would that first half. <laughs> well, I've been your host and Dungeon Master Drew, and I'm being joined by... Earthmover. And? Fitch the Unknown Undead. I'm kidding. That's not how it's supposed to go. How is it? Uh, Fitch the Undead Owner. There we go. Okay. <laughs>